Alright, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to do um, a logo animation with Element 3D as well as um, Illustrator and Photoshop even. So this is what it's going to look like. Ooh. And you can see that right here. If you click on that right there, um, you can see that YouTube video. It looks awesome and stuff because it's an awesome logo, right? So that works out good. All right, so if you have a logo that you've made in Illustrator or even um, Photoshop like that, and you have uh, the shapes that you've made with paths and stuff, you can copy those into After Effects and then extrude them with Element 3D. Now you don't want your paths to be too complicated, um, like I've got two different ones here. They're not too complicated and they don't intersect at all. Very much well that some of them do, but not really. If it gets too complicated and there's too many intersections between the masks, I don't know if that's a word, but I just used it. Um, if they intersect too much, then Element gets kind of confused and will not extrude properly and there'll be like holes and stuff like that and it'll look bad and you'll be like, what's going on? You'll probably sigh like that too. I mean, it's it's frustrating. Now, the good thing about Illustrator, even if you make the logo in Photoshop, which I happen to have done, do with the pen tool just in here. Um, with Illustrator, with like, these are just text layers right here, which you could go into After Effects and create a text layer and, and stuff, but then you have to like change the sizing, and it's just easier if you go into Illustrator. You can copy your paths over to Illustrator, um, but if you have text layers in Illustrator, you can right-click them and create outlines, which creates a mask. And you can no longer edit the text layer, but it makes it easier when working with um, After Effects. So let's do that for both of these. And let's get into it. So let's do a little setup in After Effects by creating a new solid. And let's name this um, circle. Like that. And color's not important, but for labeling purposes, you might want to have it colored. I'm going to do this reddish color right here. All right, and let's go into Illustrator and grab the circle and press Control C. You could go to Edit, Copy also, if you want it to be lame like that. Um, but I'm not going to stop you. You have full control over what you're doing, or mistakenly doing. Mistakenly, mistakenly, I think, yeah. All right, and select the layer, and Control V to paste it on there. Or, again, if you're lame, Edit, Paste, but don't do that. I won't talk to you anymore. Not that, well, I guess I am talking to you now, but it won't be this back and forth talking thing, which I'm trying to do now, kind of, not really though. Um, so we have that first mask, and let's duplicate this layer. Let's name the one below. If you select the layer and press enter, you can rename it. And let's name this blades. With this layer selected, press M, which will bring up the masks, and select each of the masks. If you select one mask and hold down shift, and while you select the others, then you select them all and delete them. And let's go back over to Illustrator and copy the blades. Control C, edit, copy, you know, whatever. Um, go back to over After Effects and select blades and Control V. So now we've got the icon of our logo done, looking snazzy. So let's duplicate this layer again. Whoopsies. And name it awesome. That's how you spell awesome. What did I do? Awesome. Again, delete all the mask on it. Go over to Illustrator. Select it, control C, and control V. 
and then duplicate this once more. Delete all the masks. Voila! And now back over to Illustrator, Control C, Control V. All right, so now we have all of our thingamajaggers and position them so they match your logo. Oh, we didn't rename this one. It's lost. Logo. All right, so just get it roughly the same way you have it in Photoshop or Illustrator. Like that. So there we go. We've got our beautiful logo inside of After Effects with masks. Now let's get into the fun part, which is actually fun. Let's create a new layer, solid, and let's change this one to be green and name it element and go to effects presets go down to video copilot and drag on element to your layer go into the custom layers and custom text and masks and for the first path you'll choose the circle then blades then awesome then logo the order isn't at all important unless you want to be cool, in which case it's very important to be this way. Two, three, four, five is the it's a combination to the cool logger. All right, and go to scene setup and extrude. It's text extrusion up here, and it's just going to extrude the first path, and it looks a little weird, like we're missing the whole inside part here, which is weird, but I'll show you how to fix that right now. Let's go ahead and rename this. If you double click on the letters up there, name this circle just to keep things organized. All right, and down here in this editor, we are going to change the path resolution to ultra, which gives it more detail. Like you can see low, oh that's really low, that's really bad, normal, high, ultra, and extreme is unnecessary for this purpose. You can do that, but it's going to slow your render time down, probably not that much or even noticeable, but ultra is fine with me. You can do what you want. Alright, so to fix the problem of the insides missing, if you click fix holes, It'll fix it. So there we go. Now we have the 3D-ness of it, which is good. Um, click on the bevel one and change the extrude to like 1.5. And I don't want to bezel on this, so turn the bezel down all the way. So now we're going to right click the circle thing, circle object, and duplicate all. Click on circle here. Let's rename this to Blades, or whatever you please. I'm not big on naming. It's whatever you want. Um, so now I go to Custom Path and select Custom Path 2, like that. So now we have our blades. And we're going to change the extrusion on these to 0.5 instead of 1.5. So it'll add different depth to different parts of the logo. Duplicate all there. Let's reorder this here. Puts it on the top, which can, can be confusing for me. Double click it and name this awesome. Awesome! And choose path three. And for the extrusion, let's do one. Bam, like that. So now we got our nice awesome logo. It's so awesome. Let's duplicate that. Ah, puts it up at the top. Throw me off. Okay. 
and change this to path 4. So now we've got our logo text. Oh, isn't that so cool? Let's change the extrude to 0.5 on this also. Like that. And let's put them in our in the proper groups. Circle will be in one. Blades will also be in one, so in the same group. And awesome will be in group two. Whoops. If you hold down alt while you're pressing numbers, it'll change to that number instead of adding it, and then you gotta go back like that. I always forget to name this one logo. Name that. Alright, so make both of these into group two. Let's go to Pro Shaders, which you can get this from Video Copilot, where you also got Element, so I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And let's get a metal, and let's do like silver on each of these. Just because it looks cool and silvery ish kind of not really sort of looks cool nonetheless so yeah click OK to go back into After Effects like the main thing You're probably wondering where's the rest of my stuff there's two more objects that need to be here and that is because since they're in the same group like the blades and the circle are in the same group you need to go to group 1 and particle replicator and particle count needs to be set to 2 or as many objects as you have in that group to show them all so same with group 2 down here particle replicator 2 all right and let's move this down a little bit there let's create a new camera and a null object to control the camera. Make the null object 3D, select the camera, pick whip it to the null object. So now we can control our camera. We're going to do this to kind of get our logo set up. Like this. Just roughly align it with the image, or your masks, I mean. All right, and let's move group two down more. Go back into the scene setup, and we're going to change the size of the blades. You click on the main blades layer and go down to transform and change this to like 80 percent like that now it's gonna fit that in there and it's gonna look all nice and groovy and all st stuff you know now we're gonna go to group two uh, whoops I'm sorry I messed up we need logo to be in another group also so circle and blades in group one awesome in group two logo in group three so let's move let's change group two particle look change the size of this to fit here like that all right it doesn't have to be exact unless you want it to be by all means do what you want I am not stopping you like I could I'm I'm even with you right now. We'll go to particle replicator. Now, theoretically, the logo should fit perfectly, and it does, because element takes whatever the smallest size object is and makes all of the rest of them the same size as that. So that's the smallest, so all of them were resized to fit that. Now we can hide all these layers and there we go we've got our logo that we made in Photoshop well I made in Photoshop we didn't this wasn't a team effort you were slacking off so you know put in an illustrator and converted the text layers to path layers 
yeah and that's uh that's pretty much it and I'm gonna be doing another tutorial on how to do the animation for this loveliness so if you want to see how to animate it click on this video right here not video video not with a B a V right there and if you want to see the demo again you can click here except my mouse doesn't turn that way worked over here because I could point that way but then I can't really point that way it's a little weird um, yeah cool so I will see you in a few minutes maybe if you want to see how to animate this maybe not though we'll see <laughs>